Here are my four new features in Enter ID that I think you'll want to see. First up is Enter Connect Application Based Authentication. Now I did a whole video on this which you can see if you tap the card just up there, but the idea is rather than using a stored credential for authentication, Enter Connect Sync, the agent that manages synchronization of your on-prem users to the cloud, will use a certificate based app registration. This is really big news for anyone wanting to ensure they have full MFA required for all authentication into Enter ID. This just came into public preview and you can only get it if you download Enter Connect Sync from the Enter portal and not anywhere else you might find it. All right, next, conditional access per policy reports. For this, I'm gonna to have to jump in to a demo. So this is really useful actually. In the past, we've been configuring and monitoring conditional access manually and having to use sign-in logs in order to see whether the report only policies would take effect. Alternatively, we could use log analytics to build reports ourselves, but all of that is built in now. So from the Entra Admin Center, I can go to conditional access and I can choose uh, policies. And you can see I've got a couple of policies here that are in report only mode. Let me just remove that there so we can see they've got some in report only mode. In fact, I might need to zoom out a little so we can see all of them. There we go. So these ones here, block password with high risk users in report only, fine. Now, in order to see that, usually I do have to go into sign in logs and look to see whether the user would have been affected by it by going into the report only tab. You can see that there by choosing the user, choosing sign in logs, choosing the user when it pops up, there we go. And then we've got conditional access, this is what would have applied, and then report only, this is what wouldn't have applied, but would have if it was enabled. So that worked, but that was on a per user basis. Now we can use insights and reporting, and here, a bit better. We can look at the conditional access policy here, and this is the report for all enabled policies. And when I choose that, I can specify whether I'm looking at an individual report on uh, an enabled policy here, so these two here, or a report only policy. So that's where you see the policies that I had, their block, block password list for high risk users was report only, and I can choose that. And there's the report for that policy. Really, really useful. Now, next, an interesting one, QR code authentication. Now this is designed for frontline workers, or really just people who log in from a mobile or tablet device. And that's because it actually relies on the device that's logging in to have a camera. The idea is that once you've enabled this method in the authentication methods policy in your tenant, you can add a QR code for one of your users. And this generates what's called a standard QR code for that user. Let me show you what I mean. In the authentication methods here, I'm gonna go back to Entra and find authentication methods. There it is there. I have QR code enabled for all users. To enable it, you just click on it and you choose enable. You can obviously specify some users using groups or you can enable for all users. Crucially, they can't create a QR code themselves though, so it's kind of fine to enable it for all users. Now, when I choose configure, you can specify the pin length. So this is that every QR code needs a corresponding pin and also the lifetime of that QR code. So by default, it's eight characters long and uh, a lifetime of 365 days. Now that's not all we need to do though. We need to actually create on a per user basis. So I'll show you what I mean. If I choose users and find Alex, for example, I can then go down to authentication methods and add an authentication method for Alex. Now this authentication method I'm gonna choose obviously is QR code. I'll choose that and this is the expiration. So in uh, a year's time, about 350, uh, 300 and something days, based on the policy that we've set. And then I can choose the activation time to be now or later, obviously. Later, then I can specify a time in the future, but I'll choose now for this demonstration. I can also generate a pin, and there we have this set up. So when I choose add, it's gonna generate that QR code for me, and it's gonna put it on the screen so I can send it to Alex, so he can print it out, or I can print it on the back of his, um, uh, identity card or give him a wallet card that you can stick in his wallet because this is what he'll need to scan when he tries to log in to any Entra application or Microsoft 365 or whatever he's logging into from his mobile phone or from the tablet that I've given him. 
he would scan the QR code and enter that PIN. Now let's say one day Alex forgets to bring his wallet card with him and doesn't have the QR code with him. In that case, we can actually override the standard QR code that we've just generated, so we can't use that one today. Actually, we're gonna edit this one here, choose edit, and we will scroll to the bottom when it loads and add a temporary QR code. Now let's that's because they might have lost or didn't bring their standard, standard QR code to the office. So I can choose add temporary. And as you can imagine, it will allow me to specify a temporary QR code. And uh, the lifetime and hours in, in this case is up to three. Uh, I can specify all the way up to 12 hours. So just to give them enough time to, you know, get in, do some work and maybe go home and get the, get their card. Activation time now, choose add. And there it's going to add me a temporary QR code that I can either print out or send to him in a picture. And that's how he'll be able to log in in the future for the next two or three hours. Very, very useful. Just it's it's that further adoption of passwordless in environments that makes it possible to use these kinds of methods rather than just having a username and password all the time. Finally, and this one is, I think is a really good addition. It's uh, it allows us to have some control over how users are given local admin in the environment. I'm going to go with devices here. And what we're talking about here is uh, in device settings, we have, where is it? Local admin settings. So uh, these settings are new to the portal, but their defaults aren't new. If you, let me, let me explain. So right now, the setting global administrator role is added as local administrator on the device using enter join during enter join, I can specify yes or no. Now that by default is set to yes, and that seems like a bad idea. Um, I mean, it could be okay to allow the global admin to be local admin on every end for device. Maybe that is an okay idea. It's up to you really. But the point was, the point is that we never had that choice in the past. Now we do. It always used to be yes, and now we can specify no if we like. That's really, really useful. The other thing is registering user is added as a local administrator on the device during enter join. Now this by default is set to all because they always were. And in fact, the only way to get around that in the past was through Windows Autopilot. And now we have that capability to just choose none. And therefore they're not gonna be local admin when they join the device to enter ID. So further reasons not to even bother using Autopilot, I think, but I'll go into that another time. You can also manage local administrators on all Entra Join devices using this button here. That hasn't changed. That's not new. And also Entra local administrator password solution. Again, not new. Still really useful. I've done a video. I'll link it up at the top there and in the description below so you can take a look at that. That's it. If I missed anything or if you want a deep dive on any of those features, just let me know in the comments. Oh, and if you want me to keep making these types of videos, hit the like button, let me know in the comments, and I will. See you next time.